Hello, this is Kasim Almashat, a registered psychologist and founder of the Center for Mindfulness Canada in North Vancouver. I'm a certified mindfulness-based stress reduction or MBSR teacher through the Center for Mindfulness at the University of Massachusetts Medical School and also MBSR teacher trainer authorized by the Mindfulness Center at Brown University uh, School of Public Health. So today I feel so fortunate that we have Florence Emilio Meyer with us. Um, I feel deeply, deeply uh, grateful to be able to call Florence as a colleague, a friend, a mentor, and really had the privilege uh, to mentor with Florence and also co-teach MBSR teacher training uh, in person and online. So thank you for uh, being with us uh, today, Florence. Um, really, uh, we've had conversations about uh, today. Um, the intention is uh, to just to raise uh, awareness about mindfulness, MBSR, and MBSR teacher training. Okay. So that's the, really the intention. But I would like to just say a couple of things about you. I know you're very humble, but uh, the background and what you bring to the field is, is quite uh, large. So I'm just going to um, read the bio for a moment, uh, and it barely uh, captures the work you've done, Florence. So Florence is a student and practitioner of meditation and contemplative practices for over 45 years. She's now currently at the Mindfulness Center School of Public Health, Brown University. Florence is a leading contributor to the development of best practices for teacher training in the growing field of MBSR and mindfulness-based interventions. For decades, she has taught MBSR and trained MBSR teachers and teacher trainers worldwide. For 24 years prior to coming to Brown University, Florence worked at the Center for Mindfulness at UMass Medical School, where for many years she was the director of the Oasis Institute for MBSR Professional Education and Training, where she supported the development of thousands of MBSR teachers globally with rigor, depth, and cultural sensitivity. Florence trained with, directly with John Kabat-Zinn, the founder of MBSR, and Saki Santorelli, the former director at the Center for Mindfulness in UMass. She currently lives in Massachusetts near her three, chil three children, uh, three married children, and five grandchildren. Mm -hmm. So thank you again um, for joining us today. And I wonder if we can start with Florence. MBSR is uh, becoming quite popular. And uh, sometimes uh, people wonder, is it for me? Um, what would you say people are seeking from it? Oh, thanks, Kasa. First of all, thank you for inviting me. Mm -hmm. And um, I share the joy in teaching with you and working with you. So I'm glad we get this time. Mm -hmm. And I hope it's of help and use to people who are curious about what is mindfulness? What is uh, mindfulness-based stress reduction? Mm. So maybe I'll just simply say that mindfulness is an innate human capacity to be aware, to be awake in our lives. A lot of times we think, well, am I awake? But we're really kind of like walking in a dream of our past or future thoughts. Mm. And with mindfulness, there's a chance and a training to actually come home to the vitality of this moment and to be present with it, whether this is a difficult unpleasantness that we're experiencing or a pleasantness. It's not trying to change that, but be engaged and alert in any given moment. And somehow that ability to show up in our lives has remarkable benefits uh, that have been cultivated through a system, a step-by-step -step process of training in mindfulness called 
MBSR. What I can say is that the uh, throughout the MBSR program, participants are invited to mobilize resources, this capacity of awareness of mindfulness, mm -hmm. uh, both formally and informally, so that it's a it becomes a way of living that has. Um, infused that's infused with kindness and compassion and also a clarity, a clear seeing. Um, we could say more, but uh, that sounds simple. It sounds like a simple thing. We'll just pay attention to what you're doing and feeling and thinking. But as we know, this is a certain wise effort. It takes a discipline to build this strength of accessing this tremendous capacity uh, that is our birthright. So MBSR trains us into ways to access this capacity of knowing what's happening as it's happening. Mm. I really appreciate how you describe the the step by step, formal and informal, because it seems like we are in a time where we want quick solutions. We want to quickly get there, give me the formula, and then you know by week one everything's resolved. And uh, really, it's this this cultivating you're describing over time, uh, in a very particular way to hone that skill. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think one of the um, hallmarks of this, the practice uh, that's introduced in MBSR mm. invites awareness of the body, not in terms of judgment or how it should be improved, but what's actually knowable right now. So the body is a, a whole system of sensations. And sensations are only happening in the present moment. Mm -hmm. So through different meditation practices, we're guided in MBSR to become aware of bodily sensations. And then as the program moves on, mm -hmm. there's also investigation of uh, perception how, what, what's the meaning we make moment by moment, visual or auditory or, or inter relational mm -hmm. meaning and being able to um, come up close to the thoughts, the moments that we say, oh, I don't like this or, oh, I want more of this and the emotions that come and go. One thing that we learn through the, um, it's eight weeks, the MBSR program, it begins with an orientation. So people really are well informed about the challenges of building that structure into your life, the formal and informal. And um, also there's um, eight classes and then there's a full day class to really strengthen those practices. Mm. So I think I was just going to say, I think that one thing that shows up when we look so closely at our lived uh, experience is how things change constantly. And to actually form a relationship with change in the body and our relationships and our um, uh, finances and our work, um, this is an area to really investigate because it's a place that often there's a lot of stress mm -hmm. that uh, comes with this reality of constant yeah. change. So it it positions us in a way to be able to see it uh, with greater clarity. We don't have to like it. 
but the knowing this too will pass offers enormous mm. support through our lives. Mm. And the way it's cultivated um, is in terms of various uh, practices. So the formal are different practices. Can you say a little bit about the formal practices and informal? Because sometimes I get asked, um, well, I exercise or I like drawing and that's my meditation. And um, that's a wonderful way to be present. But I'm, I'm curious um, if you can say a little bit about the formal, what is formal sure. versus sure. informal? You know, we would say formal um, meditations, there are four particular uh, forms of meditation that are introduced in MBSR. Mm. Um, but formal might be, okay, here's time I'm going to just dedicate to the cultivation of awareness, of being right here without having to judge it or, um, but the, it builds a muscle, it builds a strength that might be a daily practice. Yeah. The informal is applying mindfulness, whether you're rowing or cooking or making love or going for a hike, it's all the other moments in a life that could um, invite fully being present. Yeah. So I'll say something about the formal practices. Mm. Uh, in MBSR, we think of these as four different practices, but they're all about cultivating mindfulness. Mm. So one is called the body scan. And this is a practice where we, with our attention, we move through the body and uh, with no intention to change anything, but simply to be awake to what's known at the left foot. What's known at the right knee as we move through the body. Yeah. Maybe nothing, maybe something very brief, short or subtle. Mm. But this is a way of inviting present moment awareness and greater respect for the body uh, and the subtlety of sensation in the body. There's also uh, mindful movement or yoga. So, uh, and again, this is not about achievement. It's more about being present with the body sensations in movement and being wise around the body's capacity. So it's no, if you're infusing mindfulness in your movement, um, that takes attending and, and watching impulses to push over a limit or fearfulness to move at all. So we begin to explore what's the range here? What, how can this body be befriended with um, affectionate? attention. Something uh, that unless we've had an injury, a third practice is walking yeah. and walking with awareness. So it's not just a casual stroll, but, but really um, being present with every step, every movement. The fourth practice is sitting meditation. So uh, with sitting meditation, we introduce different objects to gather the mind to, to collect the mind, because the mind, you might notice, is, <laughs> moves around a lot. So we just sort of say, okay, here's, here's, let's attend to sensations at the feet or the hands or sound or the breath. And doing this invites one to gather, collect to this moment. Later in the course, we will introduce different objects in the sitting meditation, the, move, the presence of thoughts, of emotions, and then releasing objects so that we move from focused attention 
to a more uh, open monitoring of whatever rises and falls moment to moment. That's a lot asking what are four yes. practices. I went into a lot about that, but um, these are the four. And, and, you know, there's an old saying that there's only four positions to you can learn to meditate. And that's sitting, standing, lying down and moving. So we've got them covered here. Yes. You know, I, I so appreciate this range in MBSR that allows people to experience different ways to be present, to work with the body, to work with the mind, to work with the emotions, and then bringing into daily life from the uh, even eating practices, mindful eating. Um, this, this for me was quite eye-opening because I came to MBSR having a meditation practice but there was a gap. And, and as you described it, it just reminded me of the gap I had between my meditation practice and daily life. Oh, I yeah. was, you know, I, I kind of felt like I dialed in meditation in my cushion, but then didn't really bridge that gap to daily life, my stressors, how I was living life, how the way I was, how the way I looked at things actually contributed to a lot of suffering, um, stress, and even bodily, I had a lot of uh, chronic uh, digestive problems where I had to see specialists and um, they had no solution for me. So um, I guess this is what drew me to MBSR uh, myself is this is so much to be experienced and to awaken to outside of a formal meditation being a to do. Because uh, oh. it becomes a checklist. Oh, I meditated. Now I exercise. Check, check. And and uh, for years I was missing this this link of um, yeah. yeah. I'm curious. What 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 drew you to it? What drew you to? Uh, well, I so appreciate hearing your reflection about the whole life because I mean that I I think that that might be true for many people that. It's like, oh, meditation is this one thing you do once a day or, yes. or you sit over there and, and, um, and yet if it's not practical, what good is it? You know, I mean, really, does it change the, uh, the way we meet our challenges? But I didn't have a method that would be so translatable, that would be so... Um, mainstream uh, from the practice I had begun. And it was around that time that I read John Kabat-Zinn's book, Full Catastrophe Living. And as many know, that book, Full Catastrophe Living, or mindful Mindfulness for Full Catastrophe Living, uh, John wrote about the MBSR program and that he founded in 1979. And my experience was like, this totally makes sense. It just was like, made sense. And since that time, um, I've met so many people who read that book and were like, of course, it just makes sense. I mean, so many of us who have gone on to train as MBSR teachers mm -hmm. or teacher trainers had that moment of like, yes. And so that's how it was for me. And then I discovered that this was in Massachusetts where I lived that this um, stress reduction clinic, which was in the hospital at that time. And I came to train so that I could have more skills to offer to my clients to relieve suffering. And then the short story is that I basically never left. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth until many, many years later. And in part, mm. I, the, what I found from doing from the individual work, or even if it was with a group, was that it, mindfulness training offers... Uh, offers all of us um, tools that are 
um, empowering for us to engage in our own wellness and our own healing. And, um, and it's not just, it's not about being fixed or fixing. And, and it's not all psychology is that way, mm. but I just, I felt with this, the deepest resource was being accessed through mindfulness. And then really many people's work in therapy uh, went very quickly or went more smoothly with having that resource active as well. You know, th thank you for mentioning that because the truth was what drew me uh, at first was wanting to fix really is, is I wanted a, a, a fix, a solution, uh, make the pain go away, make the physical pain, make the emotional pain. I want something to quickly fix. And, um, you know, as you're speaking about John and um, something, um, you know, you're describing this like something, there's a kind of a moment of going, oh, this is what MBSR is about. And mm -hmm. for me, as I heard you speak, it, it brought this, uh, the training uh, at the time, mind, uh, mind body medicine uh, training that uh, John used to offer uh, with Saki. And at that um, program, it just something lit up in me. And I, I experienced what really he describes is this love affair of life, this, 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 this love affair of mindfulness. And I, I really um, felt it. And, and, I got hooked uh, on, I wanted more of this in my life. I wanted, uh, uh, and I wanted to offer more of this. Um, and so it just, I had a smile on my heart as you're speaking because that pull really um, led me to, um, to experience so many things, including uh, training with you and uh, mentoring. So mm. yeah, what, a, what a journey. Mm. I think one of your great strengths, Kasim, is the love affair of uh, mindfulness in your life. And you communicate that very strongly, that as John Kabat-Zinn does, you know, that we, it's a way of being in our lives that's fresh. Every, every moment is a new beginning. Mm. So we get quite burdened down with all our to-dos and the way it was and how it should be. And yet we're missing this, this mm -hmm. vibrance right now. Yeah. On an actual level, you know, uh, um, experiential, um, yes. not, not a theory, even the way you described it is so true. It's at, a, at uh, what's happening in that moment in our life. Not, not what is the theory of mind body connection it's it's the actual experience of it moment to moment in our lives so you're pointing to something in the that's a complete center hallmark to mbsr and to mbsr teacher training yeah. that it, it's not there are theories to study mm. certainly but we're really anchoring in experiential education. Mm. It's like when you know this in your own body, mind, heart, um, you can read about it with greater lucidity, mm. greater understanding. And the reading, I'm it is the reading and studying is a very it's important part of training, I think. But without the experience, it's just a lot of theories. It's yes. just a lot of thinking. Mm -hmm. And it's, this brings it into daily moment to moment life. Mm -hmm. So that practicality is there as well. Yeah. I'm wondering if you can say a little bit about, you mentioning the, the training, uh, MBSR teacher, uh, training pathway, what would you say? Who is it for? Uh, what is that training? Okay. Well, here you and I both shared uh, something that sparked us to take that step in training. 
And I would say, um, you know, I, what I would say is that I think of this in three particular areas. Mm. One is a meditation practice. So um, to come to a teacher training is to have established a meditation practice for, you know, two years is a good amount of time. Um, to have attended a silent teacher-led meditation retreat mm -hmm. to strengthen and deepen that capacity to be present with oneself. Yeah. So for people who choose to train, this, this is core. Mm -hmm. And it, will, it can develop as well. Also is what is your work in the world? What is it that draws you? Like for me, I believe for you too, mm -hmm. it was wanting to share this with clients that I was working with through the mental health facility. And so this was how, how to apply this in that life. We have people, uh, we've had people um, in the healing arts, um, uh, nurses, counselors, physicians, therapists, psychologists, educators. We have also had lawyers, business people, architects, veterinarians, yeah. um, uh, sports coaches, yoga teachers, um, massage therapists, so that may be a wide range. Uh, I don't know if I said, I said sports coaches, but coaching now itself is a, a, a field that is incorporating mindfulness very strongly too. So the placement in the world, the work in the world, mm. that might be community work as well um, that one is engaged with. And then this third element is some call to service, some call to uh, of what I know in my own life, um, and this particular method of waking up in our lives, MBSR, and wishing to share that with others. So I think that, you know, I think there's a deep, ethos, and I know this is true in MBSR, uh, first do no harm. So it's really, and do some good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, it's not just stress, reducing stress, it's human flourishing as well. And how um, it takes participation. So this we talked about um, experiential education mm. there's um i've heard this i haven't seen it but in las vegas where there's gambling casinos there's a sign that says you must be present to win <laughs> <laughs> so it's true here um we've got to be we've got to choose that this is a, something we want to develop in our lives so intention is important and then engagement participation those are two very very important factors here yeah so for teacher training <clears throat> i hope that answered your question that de it depends on the walk of life it's like i can't think of many anything that would not benefit from greater awareness and kindness. Yeah. And, um, and so it's these qualities of deepening meditation and service yeah. that calls people to, to engage in a teacher training. Yeah. And the congruency that, that I get as you're speaking about it in terms of uh, having uh, one's own practice as a uh, teacher trainer, 
is really pivotal, is really pivotal. Um, otherwise, it becomes uh, another to do learning to deliver a program. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, it will, you know, unfortunately, it falls flat when it's that way. It's, it's not a, just delivering a program, it's um, from the inside out uh, offering um, these teachings. Yes, inside out is exactly it. Yeah, very definitely is, and it's and it's. Um, so in that, it's authentic, and authenticity is a quality that it's like claiming our uniqueness in our lives, and also the realness of of seeing our lives clearly, and making wise choices that may be authoring our lives. Yeah. You know, when you're saying the wise choices, because um, when we start seeing things, sometimes we may see things we don't like, whether it's an emotion or a pattern we're in, or our, mm -hmm. even our own thoughts. Because um, that, that took me to, when I first experienced that, I thought, oh, I can't believe I have such a judgmental thought about something at the time. I don't remember what it was, but getting to see like, oh, and then um, this, this wisdom to be with it. Otherwise, it creates even more suffering if we start getting upset. Oh, why am I doing this? What's wrong with me? So this, this how you've described it, this wise relationship to what we're seeing, um, both as an MBSR participant and as a teacher trainer, getting to see how we are and uh, it will bring up things for us. Um, oh, yes. Um, yeah. yeah. No, and the, the, you know, if we're, if we're inviting as in, within the teacher training, hmm. I'm speaking now, if uh, we are training hmm. to teach MBSR, we are training to invite people into meditation, into an intimacy with their own lives. Mm. And it's impossible to do without doing that yourself. It's just, and I mean, it's, this is real. This isn't a, you know, it, and you said, it's like, it's not just like, oh, where's the curriculum? And, yeah. And where, what page do I turn on to find how to guide this meditation practice when we know that ourselves, we can share it from that. Now, it takes development of knowledge, skills, mm -hmm. and attitudes in cultivating as an MBSR teacher. Would it help for me to say something about the different trainings? Yes, please. That'll be okay. So... Um, with the prerequisites of having a meditation practice established and also having attended a five to seven day silent teacher led retreat to deepen that meditation uh, resolve really, um, then one uh, takes the MBSR class as a participant. So you, you get in the water and yes. and and if maybe it's already happened maybe somebody took it and says i i love to keep going with this mm. so once those three requirements of established practice retreat and the eight week mbsr class one can apply for the foundations and mbsr foundations now this training people are in the MBSR classroom. There's a, a, a small group that is part of the larger MBSR uh, classroom class. And then that group has another meeting. They attend the class, but they attend another meeting, which allows them to explore the curriculum, the class dynamics, the teaching style, and uh, elements of this whole program. Foundations is foundational. It's yes. named well. 
and it 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 really is the base it's like this base of saying i'm living inside um, the experience but i'm also reflecting on the mbsr experience so in many ways i think a foundation is a way of taking this deeply into one's being hmm. Um, experiencing it and reflecting on it as a way of really inhabiting it. MBSR is, it looks simple and it's got so many different layers of, of, um, of potential yeah. in it. So, mm. so following foundations, people are invited to uh, begin teaching in a way of offering a workshop, um, maybe a one and a half or three hour introduction to mindfulness. And to do three of those and to really write about the learning of that holding a group, introducing practice, opening to group dialogue. Once that has happened and uh, another retreat attended, one can apply for the second training which is the teacher advancement intensive mm -hmm. this is a how to teach mm -hmm. this class foundations is a living inside it the tai has really uh, um, really walks the group through the practices the topic presentations the group process and understanding the flow of this journey. And that's a place where you're teaching, you're learning to teach by teaching a lot. You're in small groups, large groups, but you are teaching one another and getting feedback. Mm. Following that, one is allowed, as long as the person successfully completed, yeah. you can begin teaching an eight-week class mm -hmm. and there's much to say about that um, but one support here is group mentoring mm -hmm. so here with a, a group of people who have taught maybe one to three classes you can join a group and really refine your teaching competencies following that you continue teaching and at some point in the cycle, you work one-to-one -one with a mentor while you are actually teaching and you offer film clips of your class, difficult moments and um, moments that you'd like to share that you felt had great clarity. <clears throat> and you and your mentor uh, form a strong relationship with you moving through those eight week classes, at the end of it, your mentor or supervisor will recommend what's the next step for that person. It might be more retreats, more teaching, or it could be um, now it's time to start preparing your materials for review, for certification. And so with this, um, you should be teaching six to seven classes already and you film all eight weeks and that's further down the line right now, but more information on that. But then at some point um, there is this uh, recognition of having done this full training yeah. and the certification recognizes that person's um, training we would also say that that's not the end of the road because right. then there's continuing to grow and and take more courses and refine practices but in terms of this particular teacher training journey that would be it yeah. that... and this uh, being a journey um, you know, it took me back when I first discovered it. Uh, I first approached it how I did school, which was, okay, what are the courses I need to get? What's the fastest way I can get it done? 
And I know a lot of people ask me this. So can you speed it up? How quickly can you do this? Which um, I realize it's, it's not about speed, but I'd love to hear from you. What, what do you say to someone who uh, wants to know by when can I finish this? Can I speed well, it know, up? First of all, I, it's understandable yeah. <laughs> that, that it, it's an endeavor yeah. and it's, um, it's going to take time. It's going to take an, an investments of finances and time and effort and reflection. So that's all part of it. But it's understandable if you say, okay, this is where I begin. When do I end? Um, and given that what, what we're doing is a maturation or a cultivation, I'm trying to find other words, of, of refinement to be able to work with others, to invite others into a meditation, a mindfulness, a way of living. Hmm. Um, I would say if you add all the different trainings, it, I think roughly it might be three years. It might be, it depends how people, um, how quickly people go. But it could be uh, four years or five if somebody takes longer to teach the mm -hmm. classes. Or, yeah. I mean, there's so many variables, but we wouldn't want somebody to start and 10 years later pick up. We want to have a yeah. flow and, and continuity with the training, but enough time to honor this, the uh, integration of the learning. Mm. Yeah. So, so this integration won't make it just a checklist. It's like the MBSR. It's we don't do the practices just to go check. I did it. Right. Um, but really, this this and really this helped me experience this. The slowing down of the process really helped me to digest, um, absorb, integrate, um, cook. It's it's a cooking process. <laughs> <laughs> and um, sometimes we we want microwave style quickly right <laughs> but this is you know it's a it's a slow cook that's uh, um, I found it added so much added so much taste to my life uh, yeah. the, the professional the journey itself added so much flavor um, uh, boy that's I mean that attitude too it's like the the flavors and the digestion is it's really important. Yeah. I mean, you can, if you speed through and then wonder where you were, it, you know, why cheat oneself? Yeah. From, of that experience. That's, and it, it is, a, it's like you're saying, it's like microwave. We live in the, you know, now, 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 it should be fast, fast, fast. And, some things we do, can we rush a tulip for maybe <laughs> I don't know, but it's the natural world just yeah. unfolds. Yeah, yeah. Which is which is really this what I've experienced is this nurturing and um, the mentoring that I had a chance to to experience. Really, this this watering of this this these seeds, the nurturing, the watering. Yeah. the ongoing the consistent ongoing and returning to the, these practices and learnings yeah you, you know around that too uh i get asked as well in terms of just the finances and people wonder so um how can i get the return on my investment can i make this uh uh as just my main livelihood um so sometimes i get that question in terms of sure. and it's an investment it yeah. definitely is an investment, but I have a, I have some caution around, um, around feeling like this is going to be my full livelihood. There are a few people in the world who mm. can uh, make this their livelihood, mm. but. Um, most people I know 
combine it yeah. with whether whatever their day job is. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, for me, it was being a family therapist and then beginning to teach MBSR. And then it sort of, it moved more into the teaching. Um, but for years, you know, I still saw clients uh, that went on for a while. And uh, many people I know will see clients, will um, offer their medicine, whatever their, yeah. their work is, and then also have um, an ability to offer classes as, um, a, as another means for self-development or um, uh, for, for deepening of awareness in one's life. Yeah. So I, I, when I say caution, that's what I mean. It's like to have a very realistic view about this. I think once you start teaching, there, you, you do recoup some of your yes. uh, financial investment, but, but you also have... Um, I mean, online is different now, you know, it's not like you have to rent the space or, I mean, in your case, you do yeah. uh, with people in person. And, and most classes have been taught up till this past year, uh, predominantly in person. Mm. And now we're predominantly online. But there are, you know, what are some of the expenses um, that yeah. counterpoint what the income is? So I, I think it's something to consider in terms of um, increasing your financial intake. Yeah. Uh, you know, I found it very freeing um, having both. So my own counseling work with clients and MBSR, doing different things, it, it took the pressure off uh, wow. MBSR uh, having to be the, the main source of income. And, and it really kept it being this love affair, <laughs> it really has. It's, I just love teaching it. And um, I, I try to imagine if that's the only thing I did in, in terms of private practice um, it, it will bring a lot of pressures too. Um, uh -huh. So, yeah. Yeah. That's very helpful just to clear, um, because these are good questions that people they're have. Very good. They're very, they're fair, fair questions. Fair. Absolutely. Yeah. Florence, anything else in terms of um, teacher training program, the, the, the level of rigorousness that you need to know about? What, 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 what else do they need to know about in terms of what they're entering? If they uh, to, about what they're what? If, if they choose to uh, apply for an MBSR foundation or the teacher training pathway. Anything else that you'd like yeah, people to I think to mostly... <clears throat> Uh, if you're interested, hmm. um, this is a path, uh, yes, it has a training trajectory to be an MBSR teacher, but it's a path of self-investigation, hmm. um, cultivation of what's deepest in all human beings, of what is the most natural openness that we are capable of. And it's a cultivation of that. So many people will take foundations to enhance their own learning and meditation practice, but don't choose to be teachers. Uh, you know, so that, that may be something to consider. But I'd say for all of this training, there's some level of clear intention participation, and then I think also of allowing yourself to meet yourself fresh, freshly. And, you know, we, when we look deeply, we may find that we're holding on to old thought forms or definitions of ourselves that are just something from the past. Mm -hmm. And 
to let some of that unbind in the process to in some way I would say be the candle to the flame hmm. um, it's a it's a path of awakening hmm. and it's very specific path there are many many wholesome paths of awakening in the world this particular path has brings a lot of awareness of the inseparability of the body mind of the wisdom that is potential in all of us and th that it can affect our our physical mental emotional um, relational health so health in the sense of wholeness mm. I mean, I, yeah. I think just both you and I have this thing that we refer to as the love of this mm. is not a, um, it's not just a sweet Valentine card, you know, it's a recognition that there's something about turning toward the way life is right now mm. that has a potential for greater freedom and joy. Yeah. So what would I say is that to know that this is not just check the box or um, a career enhancement mm -hmm. as much as a deep opportunity to claim one's deep birthright mm. i think it's a pathway toward that and meanwhile in working with others yeah and to think carefully is this the is it am i interested in this is this um knowing it's not one you know see one do one teach one right. <laughs> but deepen cultivate grow learn unbind keep learning keep growing don't stop <laughs> yes <laughs> well i'll I, I truly feel um fortunate grateful on an ongoing basis but mm -hmm. somehow uh, mm -hmm. i found this path and you you really have been this uh, light in the path for me uh this this, this support this uh, encouragement uh, and um, thank you for everything that you have truly uh, supported me in and supported thousands of people. Um, yes. It truly is, a, is, a, is an honor and privilege to have this conversation with you today. And um, I want to thank you and um, just a deep, deep gratitude to you. Oh, thank you. And I feel that gratitude to you and the joy in all of our shared time together, Kasim. I, I have deep respect for you and for your you as an MBSR teacher, as a MBSR teacher trainer, as a friend and as a colleague too. Thank you. Thank you.